Getting your players interested in your D&D game or your campaign can be difficult unless you have the right quest hook. So in this video, I'll be going over the ways that you can set up quest hooks, different types, as well as how to get your players involved or more engaged in your quest hooks and everything around it, like how do you spice them up? How do you keep them fresh and unique? I'm going to cover all of that, so make sure you watch till the end. We're going to start with the different ways to set them up. So just like quest hooks, we're going to start at the beginning. So in this case, there are going to be four main types that we're going to talk about. The first is going to be personal. This is pretty self-explanatory. This is something that is personal to the players or a player within your game. Their character may have a backstory that you're pulling from, or the party as a whole may have something that they need to get done that is personal to them, and you're using that as your plot hook. The other option that you might be able to use is location-based. Right place, right time, or wrong place, wrong time or the combination of the two. This is where your quest hook is coming from the area around them, and that is how you're pulling them into whatever you have planned. The third one is going to be event-based, so they know that something is happening, and that is what is going to get them involved. They know that there's a big wizard up on the hill that is planning to drop a massive extra ultra fireball on the poor little villagers below event is about to happen or it could be a fair or anything like that that you can throw in that brings it to a specific event rather than just about the location they're in or just things that are important to them and the fourth one is npc based so this is getting a quest from somebody who is driving your players towards something this isn't them stumbling into it or an event taking place that pulls them in this is an npc that is asking them to do something so once you've decided how you're going to set them up will it be personal will it be event will it be an npc or will it be location then you need to decide what makes your players interested in taking on quest if you've played DD for a while you know that some players are just well where's the money how much are you going to pay me others are for glory while you have the ones that are of course going to be more about the fame they don't necessarily need the gold they don't need the heroics of being the good guys but they do want there to be a statue put up in their honor but that's not the only options you also have the bass against the wall the world will end if your heroes or your players don't step up to save it they're not doing it because they want to be heroes they're doing it because they have to and the last one is emotional investment that evil wizard up on the hill well he sacrificed their dog for some of his rituals and now they're emotionally invested so you have to decide what What's going to appeal to your players what's going to appeal to their characters and where they're at in the story or if they're just getting started you have to lean more heavily on who they are or who they've told you their characters are but you combine the setup with what drives your players what will incentivize them and that will get them hooked right at the beginning but we're not done yet so now we'll talk about how to keep them fresh and unique so there's nothing wrong with using the typical tropes or cliches there's a reason they are what they are it's because they have worked and they are good stories for the most part that doesn't mean use them constantly and only them definitely try to take some of them make them your own spice it up a little bit another thing you can do which goes back to how to set it up even if you don't choose the personal path, throw a little bit of personal stuff in there. What are the characters in your game's desires or interests? Splash them into some of these other hooks, even if that wasn't the main driving force. That will help to flesh some of them out and add a little more engagement from your players because they'll feel like we really should be here doing this. If you have players who are into the lore, then use that. Add some more lore in there. Create a big narrative and a big story if that's what your players like. That will help to drive them through the quest as they learn more and more and you get to have a lot of fun with the creativity. And lastly, worst case, take it from a movie, take it from a book, take a quest that you really enjoyed reading about, turn it into a D&D &D book or a campaign or a hook. It all works. So now you have how you're gonna hook the players, how you're gonna get them interested in the hook, and you have a general idea of the hook you're going to use. How do you make it a little spicy? There's a couple ways. Add some urgency. There's a timeline. If they don't get it done in this period of time, things are going to go bad or it's just going to get harder. Add a little bit of urgency. The other thing you can do is raise the stakes. You can kind of shift into one of the ways to set things up or the timetable sort of thing by saying, hey, if you don't get it done in that timetable, then the world's going to end or that person, that NPC you really enjoy, well, they might be at risk of death, right? There are lots of ways you can raise the stakes and raise the urgency to make your player get more in the zone as it raises in intensity.
If your players are into it, you can also add mystery, or you can just add in some really tough choices throughout the game that will alter the path in one direction or the other. This could be considered stace, but at the same time, I wanted to mention on its own because tough choices are definitely a way to spice things up and make your players feel like their impact in the world can be very great. And the last thing I'm going to throw in this video is more of just a tip. All of your quests don't have to be a part of your main campaign. It is totally fine to just find something online or to come up with something different from your main campaign that doesn't relate to it in any way and just have your players do that for a session or two or three. That is totally fine. There's a lot of benefits to that. It can help break up the monotony of your players going through the campaign if they want to have something a little different. Do you give them that? They get that. It also gives you more time to break the mold to come up with something unique or different for your campaign how to finish it, how to continue it while they run through something that's completely unrelated. And it gives you the ability to run varied quests to test what kind of things you like or don't like, what your players like or don't like that you can include later on in your campaign. So don't be worried about everything having to stick specifically to your campaign. Throw some other quest hooks out there and see where it takes your players. Let them feel like they can make different choices within your world by providing them with different quest hooks. So there you have it. That's how you can set up your quest from start to finish. I hope this was helpful. If it was, please do consider giving the video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel for more. You can also find a bunch of free stuff over on my Patreon, patreon.com slash levelupdm. I have skill challenges, maps, all sorts of stuff, and I'm adding more regularly. If you want to support me directly, Patreon is a great way, as well as becoming a member here on YouTube. Thank you all for watching. I appreciate you, and until next time, good luck and your adventures.